Well, good morning. Uh, it's the Thanksgiving week uh, here in Seattle and I've got the week off. And so I planned on uh, cleaning up the lab here uh, so that I can get the repairs that I have stacked up. I've got a bunch of stuff written up on my whiteboard that I want to get to. Uh, but because I have all this gear in here from the last auction score, it's a little hard to do the work. So I'm going to clean it up uh, and then come back to uh, some of the repairs while I, I work on uh, some of the other gear. Uh, anyway, as a break from the E4406A, uh, what I wanted to show you was this uh, great slotted line carriage here. Uh, it's in fact, it's a slotted line, a sensor and a slotted line carriage. The drink of choice this morning is a coffee out of my Schnauzer mug uh, in honor of the hounds. I have two miniature Schnauzers. So with that, let's uh, put that to the side and take a closer look at uh, this guy here. The reason I bought this was that most of the carriages you get come in, in one of two cases. They either have nothing, so there's no sensor, there's no slotted line, you just get the carriage. Or you get the carriage and a slotted line, but you don't get a sensor. I saw this one come up uh, for a reasonable price, and it had the sensor, it has the slotted line. And uh, I thought it'd just be an awesome addition to the collection, because look at the design and the manufacture of this thing. Um, you can't feel the weight of it, but it's clearly designed to, um, you know, it's heavy and it, it's just a perfect example of the design at the time. Uh, so let's take a look at each of these sections. Uh, the first section I want to look at is uh, the sensor here. Now this is a HP 444A, uh, I think it's a triple four, um, uh, untuned sensor. Now. If we move this guy out of the road here, you can see this sensor architecture here. Now, let me zoom in so we can really get a good look at it. You know, and so what you can see here is you can see that when they create, built the sensor, somebody has sat down and hand uh, etched into the surface information about the sensor. And the sensor is basically uh, starts at this little tip here, and that little tip sits in the slot, and you can imagine the slots here, and this goes into the slot, and that sensor sits in the, uh, uh, the uh, electric field that measures the, the signal. And so as you move that vernier back and forwards, you're moving where this sensor is in terms of um, its position on the actual uh, wave, so you can measure maximums and minimums. Uh, this is an untuned sensor. Now, what they mean by that is that basically across its range, which I think uh, is about 3 gigahertz to 12 gigahertz, um, it is fairly flat. And in fact, if we just carefully set that aside over here for the moment, uh, I actually printed out the uh, HP Journal document. You can see the HP. This is um, this, all of this gear was made uh, in uh, uh, 1951. Well, I don't know actually when it was made, but it was first introduced in 1951. Uh, and this document from uh, the journal from uh, the February 1951 uh, has its write-up about it. And so what you can see here is the untuned uh, sensor has a fairly flat response compared to the tuned sensors and, and so on that you get here. And that was a benefit because a lot of SWR measurements uh, are really just uh, ratios, so they're not particularly they don't particularly uh, matter in terms of uh, of 100% accuracy because you're measuring the ratio between the peaks and troughs in the, the signal. Uh, if you needed something uh, different, you might get a a detector like this guy here. And if we just zoom in again, you'll see it. This is a tuned uh, detector mount. And so this is the 440A detector mount, and you basically can put a detector on it, and then you can tune uh, the cavity so that you get uh, uh, the response you're after. So let's uh, take off the, uh, the actual uh, uh, slotted line, and we'll take a look at that. So these uh, screws come out. This thing just feels fantastic. I don't know if you've ever picked up, you know, just a piece of gear that was clearly just well built and, you know, you get that feeling to it. And that's exactly the feeling that, you, that you're getting here. You're getting this solidity, you're getting, you know, 
a feel that this thing was built to last and the manufacturer is just the manufacturer of it is just a, a quality experience so here we go this is the um the slotted line and you can see the, the slot on there now if we zoom in a bit again uh what you can see is this is actually the military version of it um which you can tell by the usm uh designation there uh but this is actually an 806b uh, coaxial slotted line and here you can see the slot in there and let's see if we can get in a little I'm not sure we can get in any closer and still have it because uh, of the the light you know makes the silver surface makes it very difficult for the camera to jump into focus and I don't have a, an awesome there we go and so inside there and I don't have a, like, it's a little Canon uh, R600, so it's not like a uh, professional camera that I can control focus on easily. Um, it's a little touch screen. Anyway, there you can see the slot, and that slot is actually in the, uh, effectively in the coax that goes between the two connectors here. And so what happens is this guy sits at a precise depth inside this channel, and it can therefore read uh, the signal. So let's move that over the side. We have another bit more coffee. And let's take a look here at the, the mount. And the mount is fantastic here. You know, you can see the, just the manufacture of it. Uh, these are all cast pieces by the feel of them. Um, and then they're machined down. They've got these two highly accurate rails. And on the rail there, you can see underneath it, it has uh, a geared section that enables you to, and if we flip it over, we might be able to see the gear in there, you know, that enables it to e go back and forwards on that. Now, uh, this scale and this uh, uh, vernier here enable you to do very precise uh, measurements. But if you wanted to get more precise than this, on the back here is typically a dial indicator. Um, now, a dial indicator is one of those things, I don't, I don't have a photo of it, but they've got the round head and they usually have like a, a single point that comes out of the bottom of it. And as you push the, the pin in, the needle will move back and forth between a limited range. And it's uh, often they're not even, um, uh, often they're calibrated in uh, inches or in... Uh, millimeters or in fact you might have some that just simply aren't calibrated at all and so it's a it's used as a, an absolute uh, offset but you stick that in there and then you tighten down the, the set screw and that locks it in and then this enables you to set uh, where you start you can then set a very accurately set a stop point for that uh, dial indicator now, we're not using the dial indicator. In fact, I don't think this thing came with it uh, as part of its uh, original step. Anyway, that's uh, the carriage. These little screws on the side here are uh, uh, unique in that, well, I don't know if they're unique, but they're, they're specifically there for not this type. This is a coaxial one, but you can get a proper waveguide type, which is the square or the rectangular uh, waveguides. And uh, when you set up a device under test, with that, uh, with those waveguides, that you need to get everything perfectly in line, or otherwise you'll generate a spurious SWR values. Excuse me. So you would use uh, these little items, these little legs here, to go and get uh, everything to sit flat. Let me just on that, so, you know, so that everything was perfectly aligned, and this gave you great finesse and control over that. And it's just an example of. Uh, really well thought out uh, engineering. So let's reassemble this and then we'll take a look at it in operation. All right, so here we go. Uh, I have my 8340B with a 6 gigahertz signal and that signal is amplitude modulated uh, with a one kilohertz uh, signal. That's coming from my 3325B. Uh, I have the, slot, the sensor, the 444A, connected to the 415E. And on the end here, I have a, a 909A load. Now, the, I, don't, I think they're only spec to 4 gigahertz, uh, but I don't have any uh, known SWR uh, values here. 
Uh, I do have some 909 Fs, but that wouldn't help us very much because uh, they're very well matched to the uh, to the signal to the impedance. So you would basically get one and a very small number of one. I wanted something that would be uh, away from one, so we could see the difference in the peaks and troughs of the the signal in the slotted line. So what I would do now is go over to the 415E and we're going to start the process of acquiring the uh, maximum in, in this uh, solid line. So here is the setup uh, and I have the gain vernier turned down, I have range on zero and I have the expand on normal. Um, the items connected here. Now what you would do if you were taking a serious measurement you would make sure that this was tuned in on the 1k because this changed that 1k frequency so you would make sure that the, you were getting the, the most peaked out of here and then you'd make sure the zeros are all on. But for the purposes that I have here, I'm not going to do that because we're just taking a rough look at how the, the system works. So it's turned on. You have to, set a bar, have to set a crystal impedance here. Now, I don't know what the crystal impedance is for the 444A. Uh, I'm going to use low because low uh, works. It's a bit more sensitive than high, and I think it's low. Um, but uh, I need to, you know, I haven't been able to find any data on the, what the setting should be. Anyway, the process that you take is going to be the same regardless of where you're actually set here, as far as I'm aware. All right, so now that we've got that, the first thing we need to do is start turning up our gain until we start to see the meter needle move. And you saw the meter needle move just there. And there you go, now the, the meter has moved a little bit. What I can do is just turn up the gain here and I can see, all right, I'm not going to get, because eventually I need to be over here. So that's not going to be enough. So let's go up one more 10 dB and now try it again. Yeah, so we're going to have a ton of gain in that range. And so now I can come back to uh, the carriage and I can start looking for the maximum of the signal. So you see how now the needle is moving back and forwards. <clears throat> As I get there, I just tweak this until I get to the top point and that pretty much looks like it is so now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go use this vernier I'm going to remove this over until we're right on that line there we go I think that's about right the camera's in the road so I can't really see anyway we're going to read let me get my finger out of the road so you can see there we're going to read the SWR of this top line here and so uh, what I'm going to go do is now I'm going to go move the carriage until we get a minimum. And it's about there. So you're seeing that it's about 1.25 or so there. Now, we want to get a little bit more in here, and you can see the that uh, upper range there. So let's go now, and what we can do is we can go to expand. And we can come back, turn our gain down a bit, because now we know where we're going to have roughly, and now we can move up to the top round. But effectively what this does is it basically says, uh, to the uh, amplifier, it's at 30 dB, take the value from 30 to 32 and display it on the top there. And because we're looking at SWR, we're going to look at SWR here rather than just the dB on the top. So now let's get our maximum again. That looks like a maximum. So let's go into here. All right, so now let's go and find our minimum. So as we keep going down, there we go. That's about a minimum. So at six gigahertz, uh, what we're seeing in terms of the SWR for this device here is about one point, that's one, two, one point uh, uh, one oh three. You know, which is pretty damn good uh, for that load at six gigahertz. Uh, now, I don't actually know how accurate this stuff is because this clearly hasn't been calibrated. None of this has been calibrated. Um, and I don't have a known uh, uh, SWR uh, value, so I can't really tell. But let's take a look at an SWR value that's going to be higher. And so what I have here, and we can see it here, 
you can see it here in this. Um, I have a 5K uh, feed through uh, resistor here, terminator here. Now, the 5K uh, terminator is actually used uh, on the 415E to uh, check noise. So at 5K, this should be a horrible match for the, the unit here. So let's take our uh, you know, good 50 ohm load off. Let's turn down. Stuff so go back to norm, and let's put a horrible 50 ohm load on. There we go. So now we can go and do the same thing again. So let's come back over here to our 4 and 5e. We're going to go up. Uh, you know, so we're on there a little bit. Let's come up a bit more. Yeah, see, I think these uh, switch. I need to get in here and clean those uh, contacts out. Um, all right, so now let's just turn it up. Let's keep going, and that's gonna be the maximum about there. All right, so now let's just take that a little closer, and then use this vernier to get in on one. All right, so now. We're reading one on the top of that scale there. So let's now go to the other, the next minimum. And here you can see that's, you know, we've hit four. So now we've run out of scale effectively here. So the SWR ratio is four to one or worse, right? So now what we can do is we can step up 10 dB and we start reading at the bottom scale here. And so if we keep going, you know, now we've run out of 10 dB there. So now the SWR is actually worse than 10 to one. So now we can step up another 10 and we come back to the top here and we start reading it in multiples of 10. So. Yeah, so we're an SWR of about 11 and you know, 11.6, 11 11.5, um, which is a horrible SWR, which is what I'd expect though, because of the mismatch in impedance here. So there you go. That's uh, a quick overview of the 809B uh, carriage, the 806B coaxial slotted line, and the 444A uh, untuned uh, sensor. Um, this is just fantastic. I, you know, I'm glad I, I got this. Uh, I'm going to have to work out uh, some way to get a known uh, SWR load that I can get uh, calibrated and use that to see how uh, accurate this whole uh, system is. And then clearly I probably need to do some work to uh, fix up the 415E, make those knobs work properly. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. If you did, give it a nice big thumbs up and uh, you know, if I can get the lab cleaned out uh, this morning or today, I will uh, get on to some of the other uh, repairs and updates and videos this week. So uh, hopefully we'll get some good content out. Anyway, catch you later and uh, uh, look forward to hearing from you in the comments.